So we're going to discuss how to integrate inputs and outputs from the outside world into a Motoman controller. Here's the inside of a control cabinet um, right here, and we're going to primarily look right now at the at, at these um, terminal stri terminal strips that are connected with the ribbon cable. Now, this could be different for your setup. Um, you always got to check the tech documentation, but these are my technical documentations, so, and I can't really share it because it's proprietary, but if you take a look, you'll see that there is a, a name and a CN number, et cetera, et cetera. And in my case, these are my digital inputs and outputs. And you can see something coming out of B3. That is a digital output right there. Right there. Also, if you take a look, you know, if, so if I want to hook up maybe a, um, an output, I would go to, based upon the, the electrical diagram, so like in this case, I would go to, uh, B10, and I would run it to B19, uh, and that would be, and as long as I run it out, when the controller says turn on an output, that light would be wired to turn in. There is a way to hook up an external power supply here, but again, we are going to talk about that yet. Um, here's my control, here's my, some of my jumpers for my, some of my control signals. Um, that's all supplied in the power, uh, the, the tech documentation, okay? Again, don't get in here unless you know what you're doing and have the technical documentation so that you don't screw something up. Um, there is a way to put an external power supply in here if you're running big loads, but there is an internal power supply as well, okay? So this is the inside of, a, of an NX100 controller. And to close it up, you just kind of close that up and then you can turn it back on, okay? I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna show you how to program with that in the teach pendant. So, so teach pendant controlling, you know, works similarly, um, but all this is controlled through this in and out situation right here. I would ignore external inputs and outputs. We're going to deal with the universal. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff called ladder out editor you can get really fancy with. We're not going to do that in a basic class. Universal inputs, universal outputs. And as I turn on my universal, as you can see, the input number that corresponds to a ladder number. You also see something that says input group as well as decimal and hex. If I start turning on inputs and I have inputs wired in, based upon when they're on or off or not will show up right here and it will correspond to a decimal or hexadecimal number. To show you, I can sh we can simulate inputs and outputs um, because I don't have anything wired in yet. We're gonna do that in class, wiring an input, wiring an output so you can see this in real life. But we're gonna go here and I can, if I hit this, in sim, this will allow me to simulate an input. And if I hold down interlock and hit the select button, you'll see I just force it on. And notice there's a four or a four decimal because this is the binary representation from, you know, my, so going from my least significant bit to my most significant bit down here. So if I go down here, so if this was before eight, 1632, if I turn on this bit, I should get a number here that will correspond to 36. Ta-da! Hexadecimal is different because remember that's a 16-bit base. But if I turn on this here, I should get something like C or something like that. I don't know if I'm, yep, zero C. Okay, so that's a helpful thing because this is one of the ways we can, and I can do the same thing with my outputs. If I go to my outputs, you can see they're all right here. You can force those on as well. Now, I don't need to simulate this. I can just make them turn on. So if I want to make one turn on, I can just hit interlock select and it turns on and look at how it changes. Knowing binary allows you to turn multiple inputs on and uh, turn multiple outputs on and off at the same time. So how do we program? So I'm going to go to job job and I kind of did something to show you some of the fancy stuff. Um, again, you can do jump labels and call jobs and jump jobs based upon this too, but I'm, I'm, all I do is hit inform list. And under in and outputs, here's some specialized commands that we can utilize. So doubt will turn on an output when it goes across that command. Um, so, and if I have it right now, this is just a single output. If I wanted to turn on, basically turn on a bunch of outputs, I would use an output group, set it to the binary, the decimal representation of the binary I'm looking for. 
So seven would give me the first three bits on. Yes. I can also do weights for inputs. So if I wanted, if I had like sensors or safety gate attached maybe, or sensors, I, or a sensor at the end of my NMR tooling, I can wait till that's on, or I can have the machine wait if this is on. I can also have it wait if there's a, an input group, one, and that's that whole first bit, is equal to seven, so the first three bits are on. I can also pulse outputs. Now, the time will be changed based upon the variables settings, but, you know, and this is an indirect reference. So it will pulse, output group three when it corresponds to the, the, the variable. So if I go into the variable and three, if I want three, it will, if I want only the first two bits to turn on, three, I would put that in there and then it will read that value and turn on the representative binary signal. So those are some cool tricks that you can do with digital inputs and outputs. You know, now DIN, if I use a DIN command, it's going to move what's ever in input one into the, that, that variable. So input from the variable. You can't set inputs. Um, cancel. But I can change my input number, enter. I can make this, because so maybe you have a... Uh, an old encoder that has that uses an 8-bit signal, you can maybe send a signal and it'll move it to a bool, then you can use that bool to make a count for the day or something. So this is an older style programming, but you can see all the types of things that you can do with it. Input group, output group, a single output, you know, type this type of thing, okay? So that's what the DIN command does. Uh, I would go through it, but really I would rather show you guys in class this in, uh, in class, we're actually going to wire up a, a light and a switch, hopefully, to show you how all this works. All right.